One time, about six years ago, a couple came into my studio and looked at a large painting I had done of a jungle with flowers falling through it and told me that I ought to go to Paris to see the tropical garden in the city of Paris that Rousseau painted. If I would go to Le Jardin de Plante, to La Grande Serre, which is a great big hothouse Art Nouveau style, that I would find a gigantic room full of tropical plants. And I went there and I painted and I drew and I took photographs and I came back and I used that garden as the subject matter to pour into, that that is the background for my work. In fact, the subject of my work is gardens. Also, gardens that I visited in Florence, La Pietra to be exact. And I spent about a month there, painting morning, noon, and night. When I was in Florence and I finally saw La Pietra, which I had done 99 paintings of before I got there, up from a small photograph, I realized that the actual garden was not as interesting as my paintings had been. And I realized it was the content that I poured into the painting that made it exciting. As I thought about what the content was, I realized, it was hard for me to accept this, but that it was about refuge. Refuge as a place like Hunter's Point Shipyard to escape from all the mundane, worldly distractions and demands that we have put upon us, or that we put upon us ourselves. Some years after I returned from Rome, where I had done an awful lot of paintings of garden in the moonlight, I wanted some color in the, some of the paintings that were still in my studio. So I looked at some Dutch still life paintings, particularly those by Rachel Roish, who's been a great inspiration to me, and started to extract colors from those images into my, and put them into my paintings in various patches of colors. And I, all of a sudden I had all these flowers in my paintings, which I hadn't intended, but there they were. Flowers actually have the meaning for me. They are fleeting. They are stand for memento mori. And yet the qualities that come through flowers are not mortal, they're immortal. So I added these flowers to the gardens as a kind of screen falling through this dark space. I learned a lot from sharing the studio with Lawrence Ferlinghetti. I felt a little bad that I didn't have anything political in my work. And he was really sweet and he said, you know, maybe about 10% of your work could be political, but the rest of it just, you know, have it come from your heart. Sometimes there were various organizations that you want you to donate your work. And I remember I did one I really loved for moveon.com. And it was, um, it was about forgiveness. It was Bush II and the war. And I had so much trouble forgiving the president for invading Iraq. But I prayed and prayed and prayed. And I remembered that someone asked Jesus, well, how many times do I have to forgive X, Y, Z, and Jesus said, 70 times seven. So I wrote 70 times, forgive, 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 and layered it on this small panel with this marble dust mixed with rabbit skin glue, and I just layered it on top, and so it was a very deep painting. I, I like that one a lot. I spent a lot of time in my studio just sitting. I would say 50% of the time is sitting looking at the painting and praying. That's really my driving force, to know more about the spiritual world and be less mm, distracted or tempted by just the mere material world.